Hi everyone, I'm going to try this video one more time. I changed some internet settings and I hope they work this time. And sorry for the repeat. <laughs> I've um, been really excited to share this, so I can't wait till Saturday's newsletter. I have come into this life eager to expand my spirit, eager to access the other dimensions, and I've learned to talk to angels and touch heaven and connect people with their guides. But I've always had a fear of being in the physical body. It's not a logical fear. It's just something that would come up every time I felt sick, every time I felt discomfort. I would have, you know, a profound fear come up. And I think that happens to many of us. And it relates directly to previous lives for me because I know in the last one I froze and two, two lifetimes before that, um, the angels told me I drowned on the Titanic. So you can imagine anytime something feels, you know, extremely uncomfortable or, or you know, threatening to my body, I used to freak out and feel powerless. Now, I've worked on that over the years. I've worked on mind over matter, and I've had it work a few times. But two weeks ago, I put out an intention to the universe and said, you know, I really want to get over this. I really want to start having more mastery over the physical body. And guide me. Now, we know this. The minute you ask a question, the universe starts working on the answer. You know, the minute you have a challenge and you want a solution and you focus on the solution, the universe starts working on that and bringing it to you. So there I was one night, um, I've been watching YouTube a lot this year rather than television, you know, just searching around for topics I was interested in. And I ran across a, an interview with a guy called Wim Hof from the Netherlands. He's also known as the Iceman. When he was 12, he started spiritually seeking, reading about religions all over the globe, but never felt that sense of connection that was described by the spiritual masters. And one day, he says, when he was 17, he was inspired to go in a frozen lake at a park where he was. And he said the minute he entered the water, something natural took over, and he felt suddenly this alive, present sense of connection with the entire universe when the brain shuts off and we start just feeling, pure feeling, pure being. And that started a lifelong quest for him that after the death of his wife several years later, she had um, schizophrenia and was medicated so severely she committed suicide, he went on a quest for inner power and, and really was determined to figure this out so that nobody else would have to suffer like that again. And to make a long story short, he came up with a three-part method that includes breathing, cold exposure, and intention. That's on his website. I'll post that underneath. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I started doing it. And the first week, I had more energy, passion, and clarity than I've had in ages. I was just overjoyed with the whole thing. And week two... I got, I guess, a little full of myself and forgot to clear my energy after a reading where I had been channeling a gentleman who committed suicide. I was feeling his pain and crying his tears through, through, through me. And I didn't clear out the energy at the end of the night. And I woke up Sunday morning with the flu. You know, that nasty one that's going around. Everything was scratching and stuffy head and all that stuff. And I thought to myself, well, isn't this nice? This is my opportunity to gain mastery over the body. You know, I asked for it, how else am I going to know? So I started doing the breathing. And I had just barely begun doing cold showers the week before. I'm going to cough. <coughs> As you can see, it's still leaving. But anyhow, so I did this. And I went and sat out in the yard, and I looked around and saw everything beautiful. And I said, okay, angels, guides, God, I want to do this. I want to heal. And I went into this beautiful meditation. And I heard the voice of God in my head saying, see how much I love you? And I looked around and I felt this love everywhere, just pouring through my body and light pouring through my body. And I was very receptive to it because I had done all the, you know, the breathing stuff and the meditation. Anyhow, to make a long story short, by the next day, I had no scratchiness whatsoever. I still felt kind of bleh, you know. But Monday I thought, well, I'm going to do it again. So I did the breathing. I could barely breathe, but, you know, because I was stuffy, but I breathed through my mouth. And I went into these spaces. There's a point in this method where you hold your breath for as long as you can not to push it but just to see what you can do and it changes the pH and it you know changes the oxygen CO2 levels in the body and I went into bliss absolute bliss and all of a sudden I could breathe more deeply and to make a long story short by Monday night I was no scratchies nothing except you know just a little leftover stuffies was able to work Monday and feel wonderful Woke up last night again, a little bit stuffy-headed. I went, did the breathing exercises. Totally cleared me out except this little bit of residue here. And so in four days, the three-week flu 
is gone. It was actually gone in two, and then I just had residuals. So that's the power of asking for what you really want and trusting that the universe will guide you to it because, you know, the minute you ask, the solution comes, but also we do set ourselves up, and I'm fully taking responsibility to show ourselves that we, we found the answers. So whenever you find yourself in a situation you don't like, there's one of two things going on. Either your soul is allowing you to say, wait a minute, let me change that. Let me focus on what I do want and trust the universe will provide the answer. Or maybe I set myself up in a situation where I want to grow. I never forget reading something by Oprah years ago. She said, I got to be careful. When I prayed for courage, I got opportunities to practice. You know, <laughs> when we pray for something, we get opportunities to practice that quality in our lives. So I did forget to ask for joyful and gentle. Always add that when you pray for something. Anyhow, I hope that gives you some food for thought. I'll put the website underneath that refers to these breathing exercises. But since I'm in the mood and the energy is flowing quite strongly, I'm going to do a gaze right now. If you're new to this, I surrender to this loving presence in the universe. I go into a trance state and you just look in my eyes and intend to receive whatever it is you want. During the actual gazing where we are looking into each other's eyes, there's no need to think. Just be present or simply repeat to yourself, I receive. I love you all. I'm going to go into that space and you would just enjoy, okay? Let me get my music here just a second. Enjoy. Whoops. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Hold on. I need to recalibrate.
Oh wow, hi. That was that was a different one for me. I felt almost like I was waking up even though my eyes were open. <laughs> that's that's unusual. I love you all. If ever you feel like you're at the mercy of a situation outside of yourself, remember there's a power inside of us that is stronger than the ocean and the sun and, and, and creates everything and everyone. And all we have to do is call upon it to ask for help and you'll be guided in your own unique way to find whatever it is you need. I like to share what works for me. Obviously I'm not telling you that's your path. Everybody's got their own. But as we start to return to our own inner nature, we naturally are called and overjoyed actually to do the things that we want to do. And if you can learn something from my mistakes, always ask for your growth to be joyful and gentle because I forget that time and again and I put myself in these situations. I love you all. I hope you have a great night. Um, be well, be happy, and uh, just um, don't forget what lives inside of you. Love you. Bye.